What's up everybody? This is Sebastian and today I'll show you how to communicate with your Google Coral DevBoard, namely how to exchange files between your computer and the Coral. We will also be disassembling the picture of Commander Grace Hopper. Therefore, let's start by making a folder for all the files that we are going to transfer to Coral. I'm gonna call it from Coral well, let's actually change the name to uh, Coral Stuff. Let me transfer a large file into the directory I've just created, just so that I can demonstrate how to transfer a file onto the Coral. Let me push that one file, test3.mp4, from the computer onto the Coral. And as you can tell by looking at the terminal, we are not connected to the Coral yet. As we issue the command MDT push, the connection is going to be established automatically. The first part of the MDT push command is the location of the file on your computer that you're trying to send to Coral. And the second part of the command is obviously the location where we would like to receive our file on the Coral. In this case, it is going to be the home Mendel directory. It also happens to be the directory, which you will see after issuing the mdt shell command. Okay, the 16 megabytes file was transferred and that was quick. But now let me demonstrate how to transfer a whole folder with a couple of files in it. So the command to push the entire directory is pretty similar to pushing a file. It is again mdt push and then the location of your directory that exists on your computer, then space, and after that the location of the directory you are sending to on your device. Now that we have transferred some files, let us connect to the Coral and we will see where the files actually ended up. When we list the content of the home Mendel directory, we can already see that here they are. Here is our large file, as well as the folder that we had pushed a few moments ago. Now let me quickly clean up the home directory. At this moment, I am going to show you how to download files from the Coral onto your computer. The download can be achieved with the mdt pool command so let us write mdt pool then the absolute location of the file or the folder we would like to download from coral dev board space and the location on your computer where you would like these files or the folders to end up the directory that i chose to download is the examples directory it is a collection of Python apps prepared by Google and these are the ones I am downloading right now. One of the files is very important to me today because it demonstrates the example I'll show you in a few moments. This particular script demonstrates how to detect objects in an image. One of the requirements, however, is that you have an Edge TPU attached to your device. And in our case, it's not a problem since the Coral dev board has already an Edge TPU embedded into it. There are some requirements to be fulfilled before you run the example. So go ahead and execute this command. However, if you've watched my previous tutorial, we've already installed all the requirements together. The processed final image with the annotations will be uploaded into the home directory. In this example, the processed file will be named gracehopperprocessed.bmp. So this is also going to be an image file. The input file is located in the test data directory under the name gracehopper.bmp. And let us take a look what else is in the test data directory. So it turns out that we have here a bunch of images along with several HTPU TFLight models. Now I'll be pulling the whole test data directory onto my laptop.
First of all, there is our image gracehopper.bmp and uh, yes, it is one of the pictures provided by Google in this example. And indeed, the commander looks like a VIP and looks very sharp on that picture. We will be exploring the other pictures a little bit later, but now I'm going back to work. To identify objects in this image, let me copy the entire command and paste it into the terminal and execute it. It looks good we didn't get any errors and something did happen indeed. And now let's get over the results. First of all, we do get a note that the first inference is slow simply because it includes the loading time of the model into the edge TPU memory. That's why the first inference time is just above 38 milliseconds with the following inference times hovering around uh, 15 to 16 milliseconds. There are two items found. One of them is the tie, the other one is the person. And the tie has a confidence score of uh, just shy of 0.84. And the person, the confidence score is just above 0.8. Our little app has also put bounding boxes around the objects that it had detected. And I'm curious how the processed picture looks like with the bounding boxes around the objects. And for that, we need to pull the image from the coral board. And here it is, this is the processed image. We can barely see the flimsy bounding box around the tie. And a large bounding box basically highlighting the entire image with the commander herself in the middle. Looking at the picture, it makes me wonder what other photos did Google provide us as the examples. Let us quickly look at them. One of the images is called Kite and Cold. I'm going to open it and let's take a look. Oh, it indeed looks like it's very cold on that beach. And what's important is that uh, there's tons of kites flying around. We are going to check if uh, the kites are in the COCO dataset. And the only way to figure this out is to run object detection on this one picture. Let's start by changing the file names in our example, copy the command and Analyze the processed image. Oh, we did get a lot of results from that one picture. From the output, you can already tell that kites as well as people have been detected with uh, various confidence scores. The confidence scores, as you might suspect, depend on many different factors. Some of them are the quality of the picture, uh, the size of the object on this picture, the resolution of the image, and such benign things such as the orientation of the uh, item on a, a photo. So therefore, the confidence scores will always vary from the lowest uh, being 0 to the highest being 1. Therefore, we have to worry about uh, detection thresholds just so that it's not too low or too high. And in our application, there has been a threshold set to a default value, but we will talk about that just a little later when we actually analyze the Python code. So going back to the photo, we do have uh, various objects um, within bounding boxes. There also seems to be an empty bounding box way in the distance, uh, highlighting pretty much uh, sand on the beach. What other photos do we have at our disposal? There is a bird and a cat photo. And here is even our famous parrot picture that we looked in previous tutorial. There is a sunflower photo as well as person squatting. The squatting person photo we will use in another example when we will be estimating the pose. But right now I think I will use the cat picture for our very last example of today. And a cat has been found with a very high confidence score of 0.97. 
First of all, you can barely see the bounding box, but that can be easily changed in the code. But yes, the bounding box is a red line on a, a brownish reddish picture. In our Linux command, we always use the line labels test data forward slash cocolabels.txt. Simply because it's a human readable file, let us take a look what's in it. And it turns out that inside of the uh, labels file, we do have labels for all the objects that the model can detect. It looks like theoretically there is 90 objects that the model is able to detect, but the number is actually lower just because some of these labels um, are marked as not available and slash a. Let me quickly count how many not available labels there are in our labels file. So we do have 10 labels that have no name. That brings down the number of objects that we can actually detect from 90 all the way to 80. Oh look, there is even uh, some room for a giraffe and a zebra in our model. Let's go, let's now start probably the least exciting part of the tutorial, which is going over the Python code that lets us, that allows us detection of the various models. So bear with me for a few moments, okay? As always, first we have to import a few libraries. Then we will find the function draw objects, which is responsible for drawing the bounding boxes, as well as placing the labels on the photo. So specifically, this script is responsible for drawing a red rectangle, as well as displaying red labels shifted a little bit down and to the left. Therefore, this is the place to change the color of our bounding boxes. In line 56, in the main example, here we are setting several different parameters, such as the location of our TF light model, the input file that we are working on, also the location of our labels text file, as well as the location of our image output file. Earlier in our examples, we didn't have to specify the threshold value only because its default value is set here to 0.4. Basically, it has been decided for us, but here we can change it. The threshold value basically means that below the confidence value, in this case 0.4, no objects will be detected. It is of course enough to run inference once on an image, but if we want to compare the times, this is why we can specify also the count value. In this case, it's been set by default to 5. In line 76, we are loading the image into the memory. And in line 85, we are calling on our interpreter, initializing the image recognition process. And a very important line 87, where we do actually get our objects that have been detected in the image in the form of an array. Or, if no objects have been found, the only message we will see is a message saying no objects have been detected. On the other hand, for objects that had been found, we do get all the other relevant information, such as the object's ID, the score, as well as coordinates of the bounding boxes. Something that we should have actually started initially, here is the readme file, which specifies where to look for help with setting up our Coral device for the very first time, the place where we can find our example on GitHub, as well as uh, how to install all the requirements for the examples provided by Google. There is, of course, a lot more examples to explore, and they can be found on the Google website, coral.ai/models.